Hello everyone, Nubasaurus here, and I know this isn't my usual style of videos. I uh, usually try to do things a little bit more live. Uh, you know, I, this is my first time doing a pre-record and the voiceover and all that stuff, so it's a little interesting. I thought I'd try something new. But uh, today I wanted to show you something. Uh, this is a project that I've been working on for the past three months. If you follow me on Twitch, you'll know exactly what this is. If you don't follow me on Twitch, that's okay. I'm about to explain to you what this is. This is Blue Wave, my first redstone computer in Minecraft. Now, if you're wondering why I called it Blue Wave, uh, take a look at the API over there. Uh, blue glass looks like waves, you know, put two and two together. I thought it was a pretty cool name. Uh, I know other people have made computers in Minecraft before. This is not a new thing. So for that reason, I'm not calling this episode a, you know, a noob invent something episode or something. It's more of a showcase than that. But I just wanted to show you this because I thought it was pretty cool. And I'm very, very excited to show it off because, well, like I said, I've been working on it for, for three months. Uh, it is, I, I do want to say it is not the fastest computer in the world. Uh, its clock speed is about 20 seconds per cycle, so it's very, very slow. Nor is it the most powerful. The most powerful I've seen is a 32-bit computer. This is only an 8-bit, but, uh, you know, it, it is mine, and I do plan on building a better one in the future. You know, this is essentially just the first revision. But like I said, this one's mine, and I'm, I'm rather proud of it, and uh, I really can't wait to show it off to you guys. So, without further ado, let's, uh, let's go into the specs of this thing, shall we? So the first thing I want to show you is the memory. Now there are two sections to the memory. There is the RAM and the ROM. The one you are currently looking at right now is the ROM. That's the uh, black and yellow squares there. Uh, there are 256 memory locations in the ROM. Each memory location has 30 bits of information stored. That's essentially just under 4 bytes of information being fed in parallel into the computer. Now in this sense, the ROM is being used basically as an opcode reference, meaning each time an instruction is pulled from the RAM, the computer first references it through the ROM to see what it has to do with the following information. Now, speaking of the RAM, which is what you're looking at right now, uh, the RAM also has 256 memory locations, which is way more than you need. I've got four programs stored in here, and I've only used about a quarter of the RAM. Uh, but in terms of memory capacity, it's only half of the ROM. It's two bytes sent in parallel. That's the opcode and the data, each one byte. Uh, and as said, it's basically just used to store programs, variables, addresses, used for jumps and calls and stuff, and data. Now, the data that it stores, or the data that it can put out, is sent throughout the computer on this. This is a two-way bus. This two-way bus is made possible thanks to two-ray repeaters designed by Derby Paco. Links are in the description. For what it does, it's fairly effective. However, I have noticed one small bug, and that is due to the way pistons work. Basically, it tends to bug out and hold memory itself. And so in order to fix that, you have to refresh the bus between operations. But other than that, it works pretty well. Now, if you thought that was a lot of memory, hold on to your hats because there is still more. These are the General Purpose Registers, or GPRs. There are 16 dual-read GPRs in total, and they are essentially used to send two bytes of information to the ALU at the same time. We'll get to that in a sec. But it's also used in porting when used to communicate between the I.O. interface and the memory itself. We'll also get to that in a sec. This is essentially a more permanent location for variables using calculations in the ALU. Now you probably already heard this guy in the background while I was talking about the GPRs. This is the regulator of the entire computer, the clock. This clock is 25 ticks, or a 25 tick loop, or 2.5 seconds, and it runs through three T flip-flops, uh, making for a grand total of 20 seconds per cycle. Now, it does need to go through those flip-flops because it actually has to do five different functions per cycle. Uh, it's also got various controls that allow me to stop, reset, and go to a specific stage in that, you know, cycle. Uh, so it's very, very handy when it comes to controlling the computer itself. Of course, the clock controls the entire computer through this guy. This is the combined 8-level stack pointer and program counter. For simplicity, I just call it the program tracker, and as it says on the tin, it's used to track the program's location and memory. Uh, it includes functions like increment and decrement used for programming and during the run, but it also has functions like jump, call, and return, which are used to run subloops. These are controlled by the RAM and the flag register, which I will get to in a sec. So now we get to the heart of the computer, the ALU. 
This is responsible for all arithmetic and logic computations in the computer. Uh, this particular ALU is my own design, however the circuitry is based off of the Intel Z8085 microprocessor, which was kindly reverse engineered by uh, Mr. Ken Sheriff on his blog. Links, if you are interested, will be in the description. Now this ALU has uh, 12 functions, which include add, subtract, increment, decrement, compare, shift left, shift right, and or not complement and exclusive or. These 12 functions basically allow it to do anything. Now you may have noticed that there is an external digital comparator on the left there. That's because I forgot to build that into the ALU. I did build a second version with that comparator built into it. However, I realized you could synthesize comparison using subtraction and the negative flag. So I built a third version that just took the digital comparator completely out of it. Now there is also a 10-bit flag register included in this thing, and those flags include less than, greater than, equal to, zero flag, auxiliary, carry, parity, sign flag, overflow, carry, and negative flag. However, in version 3, it only has four flags, less than, negative, carry, and zero, because I can use those four flags to do the same as all 10, so it's basically just trimming the fat. But for this one, as you can see right here, there are indeed 10 flags. Finally, we have the API. Now, the API is this platform right here used to interact with the computer, and I do want to point out the redstone pixel art in the center. Uh, the whole thing is made of glass, so you can see what's going on below you, but the, uh, the API basically includes various monitors and controls. Uh, it includes a RAM monitor, which basically allows you to see the uh, address you're on, the opcode being executed, and the data being sent through the computer. It also has a flag display so that you can see exactly what's happening inside the ALU. Uh, it of course has a digital programmable I.O. port so that you can talk to the computer or the computer can talk to you. It also has a uh, control or an address control port which allows you to uh, jump to any part of the computer at any time. Uh, and it has a key and interface which allows you to program the RAM it also has other various bells and whistles uh, used to program the computer, start it, stop it, debug it, and control it. So as mentioned before, I did say I have four programs already programmed into this thing. Uh, the one you are looking at right here is the Blink program. Now, the Blink program I wrote just to test out a few op codes. Uh, but basically all it does is it periodically turns on that uh, that light in the back of the I.O. port. You'll see it turn on here in just a sec. You should see it turn on right about now. Yep, there it is. Okay, so it basically just blinks that light over and over again. That's really all it does, but I do have some other programs already put into there. Uh, I actually have a Fibonacci counter, which counts the Fibonacci sequence in order, as well as a countdown program, which starts at three and counts down to zero. Uh, and like I said, I just wrote these to test some of the instruction set, which by the way, I wrote myself. Now, I do have one that doesn't work, and that's the square root calculator. For some odd reason, um, it does not seem to be able to perform its calculations correctly. I'm still debugging that. Hopefully I can actually get it to work. Um, but, you know, other than that, it, uh, you know, it's, the whole thing works pretty well. So if you want to go ahead and download it, kind of mess around with this stuff for yourself, uh, I'll be sure to have a download link to a Planet Minecraft download, um, you know, which will include hopefully the instructions set and uh, a programming tutorial. And uh, if you like this, be sure to like, subscribe, it's always appreciated, and I'll see you guys in the next video. So I guess I'm just going to sit here and let you guys watch the, uh, watch the computer performance calculations for the next couple seconds, and like I said, I'll see you later. Bye!